meeting for Thursday, October 20th, uh, 2022. Uh, if you care to join us, please rise <coughs> for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, to start off, we have a number of items on the agenda tonight that were uh, uh, either continued or withdrawn. Appeal number 3140 uh, continued to the December 15th meeting. Uh, appeal 3142, uh, that application has been withdrawn. And appeal 3145 has been continued uh, till next month's meeting on November 17th. What, what's that? 46. Oh, I'm sorry, 3146. I'm reading wrong. Um, so the first uh, item on our agenda is appeal number 3127. The applicant, Lawrence and Kimberly Kimmel, property located at 328 West Lawyer Place, requests an extension of time for obtaining a permit under section 280-144 of the code for an additional six months to May 13th, 2023. George? Well, good evening, I'm George Brosman. I represent the applicants. I had submitted a letter uh, to the zoning hearing board explaining our request. Um, a project like this requires a grading permit and then a building permit. Uh, the Kimmels have been diligently proceeding uh, on the grading permit. Um, and then after they do that, they could uh, apply for a building permit. As I indicated in the letter and the board is probably aware, an appeal has also been taken um, by uh, one of the neighbors, which may further delay things. We're not sure yet how that will affect things. So. We're asking for the uh, uh, six-month extension through May 13, 2023, for the time to obtain a building permit. Okay. Uh, when um, when was the uh, the grading permit application was filed? Yes, the, I don't have the date, but almost immediately after the uh, decision, and uh, so that, that would have been in May. That's about. Uh, to be issued. I saw some emails uh, just yesterday that we had addressed all of the remaining comments of the township engineer. <clears throat> Once we get the grading permit, then they could apply for a building permit. And then, of course, there's a lead time uh, for that. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, we have this appeal pending, and we're not sure, um, you know, what that's going to mean yet, whether the Kimmels will elect to proceed at their own risk or whether they will uh, wait till the appeal is dispatched. So, so, um, so we're, we're going on six months uh, and if the grading permit was filed, the application was filed in May, so it's been in the township's hands? Have they been sitting on it or? No, not at all as usual. Uh, you know, there's usually back and forth, there's comments and re revisions made, so that's been, uh, <clears throat> that's been proceeding. Um, in the normal course. And, and you're saying that's required for the building permit? Yeah, because there's earth disturbance, um, that is required before you can apply for the building permit. W were, th were there any permits issued? Uh, uh, well, let me back up. Um, what's the status of the project? Are they working out there? What, what's, what's happening? Um, Site? They're not working on the project. Um, they had apparently, unrelated to the project, had done some work to the driveway and they were told by the township they had to stop and they incorporated that into their permit request. Um, but that was unrelated to the project and they have not started working on the project. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could just clarify something. Yeah. Um, submission of building permits is not, is independent of grading permits. You can submit a building permit at any time is not sequential. You don't have to do grading to get that issued to get building. Building can be submitted at any point in time, concurrently with grading. And for a project like this, what's, Kevin, what's your normal experience for We've turnaround We've seen time? both. We've seen them submitted simultaneously. Um, we've seen grading permits first and then grading permits, or I'm sorry, grading permits, then building permits, uh, and then simultaneously. It, it all depends at which speed the applicant wants to move. But is, is, is five months, not that you're <laughs> testifying here, but, uh, just in your experience, is five months a long time for the township to issue a permit? That seems extreme. Um, so, and I don't 
review the grading permit application, so I don't know to what degree uh, the completeness of the plans were. Um, you know, our reviews are based off of the information that's submitted. Um, so the more uh, complete the plan set, the shorter the review period is and the review comments that need to be. So uh, if it's taken that long and it's a lot of back and forth, that would suggest that there were uh, a lot of questions on what was submitted. Understood. Understood. And Kevin, um, you, you, you're not under oath, but don't don't worry. We're not going to cross-examine you all night. <laughs> I, I hope. Um, is, is it possible that portions of the building permit application would be affected by the outcome of what's happening in the grading permit approval process? I mean, locations and you know whatnot. I mean, it it might not be unreasonable to not have filed a building permit given what was involved in the grading permit process? Sure, we always recommend you file grading first so that if there are tweaks to the location of the building, um, that that gets worked out. And usually uh, when you have those sorts of things, the footprint changes on really tight sites, um, kind of as an independent floating structure. I know that this is attached. I don't necessarily see that with this one. Um, you know, it's kind of where it has to go. There's not a whole lot of flexibility with the, the footprint as compared to a, a residential addition. Um, but we always recommend people go through the grading permit process first just for those reasons. Thank you. And I failed to mention, too, I recall that I did not attend, but as part of that, my clients also did attend the Shade Tree Commission meeting uh, related to the grading permit. So that was another thing that had to be done. Well, it doesn't sound like there's any, any impediment for your client to tomorrow file for a building permit. Well, as Kevin indicated, in my experience for a project like this, um, I didn't realize the township would accept the building permit, but most, most clients I have get the grading permit first and then do the building permit. And then, you know, we do have the appeal that has been filed, so um, the clients will have to decide, do they want to, uh, you know, try to get that appeal uh, denied or... Uh, you know, through the courts, um, which I think would be reasonable, um, or do they want to keep proceeding uh, with that, that appeal? They would have the right to proceed, uh, but certainly with the appeal pending, they're, they're proceeding at their risk if the court should reverse. They could still get the building permit, and then they would have to decide whether they want to take the risk of going forward or not. Yes, although there is a substantial expense in uh, preparing a building permit. Um, that's a high level of plans, and you know, I'm not saying they they won't do it, um, but with a with an appeal pending, that's something to be considered. At what stage is the appeal? Um, the w one neighbor filed it, and uh, it's like sitting in the court. They have not moved forward with the appeal. Has it been to assigned? I'm familiar with Delaware County, right? But, you know, they, has it been assigned to a judge? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I know that Delaware County moves rather slowly with certain things. Yeah, land use appeals, in my experience, um, don't move at the fastest pace. Is it a case we anticipate discovery being taken, or it's just going to be up on the record as it is? Um, it should be on the record. Uh, typically, in a land use appeal, there's no discovery. It's uh, the court, um, here's the case uh, under the provisions of the municipality's planning code on the record that was made. Um, a party is free to petition for additional evidence if they were denied an opportunity to present evidence. So maybe if there was a new event, I don't, I don't see that happening here. It doesn't happen in most cases. So I think the court will be uh, taking it up on the record that was created here. Um, I think at this time I'll, uh, we've received uh, four letters from neighbors, um, uh, first from uh, Jill Adams, second one from uh, Jack and Cindy Mullen, third one from Rich Sternhill, and finally Barbara and Kevin Ilson. Um, Can you spell those names, Yes, yes, sorry. Uh, first one is Jill Adams, A-D-A-M-S. Uh, second letter is from Jack and Cindy Mullen, M-U-L-L-E-N. Uh, 
third is, it's actually it's Richard and Alexis Sternhell, S-T-E-R-N-H-E-L-L. And finally, Barbara and Kevin Ilsen, that's I-L-S-E-N. Um, all four letters uh, were in opposition to granting the extension and uh, made various complaints about uh, ongoing construction in their neighborhood. Um, I, I w will say that I, uh, you know, if in fact that is the case, this is not the forum to raise complaints about construction. Um, tonight, the, their only decision is granting an extension on getting a building permit. And the, the analysis there is whether, uh, whether the applicant has acted reasonable and diligent in working towards that goal over the last five or six months, and uh, you know, is it is, is it reasonable to uh, extend that time period? So that is that is what we need to uh, decide tonight on the application for an extension. Um, is is there anything else, George, at this point? No. Okay. I did not receive a copy of those letters, but I'll, I'll put in a request to the township to get them, but. Um, I wouldn't see any prejudice to neighbors who were opposing the project that the project hasn't moved along faster, but uh, yes. Okay, um, at this point I'll, act, I'll ask if there's any public comment from anyone. My name is Jill Adams, and I reside at 329 West Laurier Place in Bryn Mawr. I'm a bordering downhill neighbor to the applicants residing at 328. The applicants are requesting that the board grant a second extension of time to complete the application process for their building permits. In December 2021, this board granted the applicants their first request. As you know, Laurier is a small, quiet plan community encompassing less than 30 homes with only one road leading out. Absent sidewalks, our children, school buses, and pet owners are forced to share the road with construction vehicles and contractors. In March of 2021, the applicants made the important assurances that if their project was approved, it would cause a little disruption to this quiet neighborhood. Regrettably, this has not been the case. Detrimental to the neighborhood's welfare, the applicant's contractors often are on site outside of permitted township ordinance. Reports have been made of contractors parking their vehicles on neighbors' lawns. The applicants themselves have not complied with our Laurier homeowners bylaws. With no approved change request, an excavator dug up the driveway bordering my property, tearing away at the roots of my established row of privacy trees and causing damage to the blacktop owned by the neighbors residing at 324. It remains to be seen if my mature row of trees have suffered harm. During their driveway improvement project, the applicants violated township codes by performing unpermitted work. This project has been paused by the township. Recently, despite boasting that their nearly three acre plot Excuse can me. accommodate a Excuse large me. scale project. Yes, sir. You're reading a letter that we've already admitted into yes, evidence? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, you know, I, I understand your concerns and they're genuine. Unfortunately, tonight is not the night to ha rehash old arguments or talk about what the condition is currently. We have to decide whether they've acted diligently in getting this application. 
And not that it makes any difference from your perspective, but this is actually the first extension. The, the previous extension was an extension of the application. This is an extension to get the building permit. And again, again, from your perspective. Yes, sir, I understand. Matter. And I appreciate the board's time. I guess the question is, um, why are they seeking a six month extension? What is a justifiable reason to prolong this already unpopular projected issue in our neighborhood? So I don't hear of a justifiable reason. Um, I guess that's for the board to decide. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other public comment? Um, George, anything else? Okay. Um, board discussion? Um, it's unfortunate that they, these folks are not being good neighbors, and I would strongly suggest that the neighbors dial 911 with all these complaints. The, uh, especially Laurier is, was built with narrow cart ways when it was built. Um, essentially, there's only two lanes. Uh, when there's a party or a gathering, you can only get one car by. Uh, so it's a very tight neighborhood. Um, and the, the fire and safety concerns are all legitimate. But again, the police department and the community development department should be the ones you're talking to. And I'd also advise you to talk to your commissioner about this. Um, but it seems to me that the, it's reasonable for them not to move forward with the building permit um, until they have the other permit in hand or at least agreed to whether it's issued. Uh, that just seems to be a reasonable expectation. I saw it many, many times in the past. Um, so I'm in favor of granting the uh, extension within the narrow confines of what the rules are for this. Uh, I agree with those sentiments that uh, a little uh, concerned that uh, they ha that apparently uh, the applicants uh, have been doing work and having construction vehicles in that area and they don't have a building permit or a grading permit. There may be an explanation for this and it's not the evening the time for us to resolve it. It's not our job to resolve it but we are and have been made aware of it. So I second what Mr. Nagel has said about making sure that you call your commissioner, you call 911 if things like this are going on. I was particularly concerned when I read that uh, it appears that uh, workmen went on somebody's lawn and was doing, doing some sort of laying a cable in the lawn uh, without permission. I mean, that just engenders, if it's correct, engenders bad feelings and uh, nobody needs that. Um, there's an, enough emotion being generated by this project already. But I do believe that it's our obligation to give people an, a reasonable time in which to uh, get their grading permit and the building permit and uh, because uh, of, of an appeal that's been filed and whatever other issues have cropped up in the application with the, per with the, with the grading permit that have to be resolved, we grant these things fairly regularly in, in, in my experience while serving on the board and I think we should do it in this case. So I would, I would support a six months extension as requested. Yeah, um, started by asking for a, um, a resolution. Anyone like to offer one? Mr. Chairman, I would move that the applicant be granted a six month extension to obtain a building permit the extension to expire. Did somebody do the math for us? No, May 13th, May 13th. 2023. Okay. I would second the motion. Okay. Um, any other, any further discussion from the board? Yeah, the, 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 one, the one issue that arose during testimony uh, that warrants a, a bit of thought is the difference between obtaining the permit and commencing with construction, the building permit and commencing with construction. Uh, Yes, building permits uh, are not inexpensive, and for larger projects, they are flat out expensive. But um, commencing construction and being at the risk of what might happen in media, 
uh, is something entirely different. And you know, to the extent that the applicant can obtain the building permit prior to the expiration, you know, I I, uh, I think that that's not an unreasonable request from the from the applicant uh, at this time. So uh, I I would support the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, um, we'll have a vote. Um, Mr. John Nagel? Aye. John Lord? Aye. Rich? Aye. John? Aye. And I vote aye. So it's unanimous, five to zero. Uh, the, uh, the resolution to uh, grant the application for a six month extension uh, has been granted. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for coming today, everyone. Appreciate it. Next application, uh, number 3145. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not 3145. Okay. Yep, that's it. Uh, I got it right. There you go. I know, I'm getting these numbers mixed up tonight. I have, before I get started, I do have a larger plan I was going to put up for you guys to take a look at if you'd like that. Okay. Uh, th I'll just read it. The applicant, Brett Harvey and Christine Rooch Harvey, property located at 163 Morningside Circle and zoned R4 residential. The applicants seek relief, seek relief from Section 280-30D.1 of the code to convert an existing non-conforming side porch into a one-story addition. The addition will not encroach any further into the side yard requirements. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, did you guys want to see the plan? Yeah. Introduce yourself and we'll, we'll get started. Absolutely. Yeah. So my name is Brett Harvey. I'm the property owner uh, at 163 Morningside Circle along with my wife, Christy. Um, so briefly, uh, we moved into the... So uh, we moved into the property at Morningside Circle seven years ago. Uh, in that time, we've had uh, two children and have come to really love that neighborhood and where we are. We did briefly embark um, on a house search to see if there was, um, you know, kind of a larger home locally that could support our family as it was growing. And the more we looked, the more we realized where we were is where we wanted to be. And so when we kind of arrived at that, we embarked on about an 18-month process here of looking at how we could make our current property work for what our current family situation is. I've actually had a lot of conversations with Kevin uh, over that time to kind of figure all of that information out. And so, um, you know, we, we came to uh, create this, this project that included enclosing this side porch um, that was an existing nonconformity when we moved into the property. We have um, spoken with all of our immediate neighbors. They've all provided letters of support that are in the packets that you guys have in front of you as well. Um, and I'm not aware of uh, any opposition to the project from anyone in our community. Um, we do believe that there's a possibility that this could be considered as uh, grandfathered in under Ordinance 28101 um, on nonconforming buildings. We don't have a record of when the side porch itself was constructed. Um, so in speaking with Kevin, there's no record um, of when this was constructed. And um, the home was built in 1950, which obviously was under previous ordinance as well. Um, we don't propose anything to increase the size of the nonconformity with respect to the setback. Uh, and our building coverage and our impervious all comply with the existing ordinance. So the, uh, after, um, at the conclusion of the project, we will be at 33.6% on the impervious and the allowable is 40%. Um, according to the ordinance. Um, so, just put this out so to provide the visual for everyone as well here. I apologize, I've not done this before, so if it's upside so, down it, or wrong, yeah. just let it, me know. Is this, is this the same one we, we have? It should be, yeah. I apologize for the size of those. I wanted to provide you guys something larger if you needed it, but totally up to you. Sure. Um, so, do you, do you have another one of those just for the, uh, our, our uh, file? I do not. I apologize. I can provide this one at the conclusion if you'd like, or for everyone it's, to pass it's around. Just, it's the same that one. is the same one. Yes, it's just the larger. We, yeah, we don't. We don't need the big one. Okay, no problem. Um, and then, uh, you know, additionally, um, 
the way our home is constructed, we are between two corner lots. One is at the conclusion of Kirsch and one is at the conclusion of Landmore Avenue. So they're both corner lots. Our lot was kind of dropped in between those two lots. So it does create sort of an odd shape um, for our property that creates some challenges for us in regards to the setbacks. Um, you know, additionally, just to reaffirm, we didn't create the nonconformity. The porch has been there for a pre-existing amount of time. We don't know exactly how long it has been there. Excuse um, me. Can you, can you just point using uh, uh, to where, where? So it would be this area right here. Right there. Oh. Okay, thank you. Oh, absolutely. And there should be, um, I provided some pictures in the packets for you all as well that you can see what the existing uh, side porch does look like as well. Um, so we feel like this is also the mini minimum variance um, that we can ask for. Um, there's no way to use the stru structure currently that would re-increase the size of those setbacks back to what they were previously. Um, you know, and so we're excited about the opportunity to um, you know, improve the appearance and the appeal of our home and make it a more livable space for us. Thank you for your consideration. Absolutely. Do you want me to just put them up here? Yeah. So that's a head-on shot of it from uh, the Sorry, front of the house. Uh, so the second one uh, shows in the corner here what that looks like from the rear of the yard. I'm sorry, I think it might, um, it might make sense to identify these exhibits for the yeah. record. Yes. So why don't, why don't we identify the one that shows the, uh, it looks like the, the porch. With, is this the yeah, front that's of the, the That is the uh, proposed area to be enclosed. Okay. So that's A. And then a, the next photograph you put up. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, if the application is, is A1, the application and its its attachments are a one, and then just more specifically identify the pictures, perhaps as picture one, picture two, picture three, and picture picture four. Okay, so that would be picture one, and then the the, the photograph that's below the screen up there is that shows the back of the house with yep. the with so I would be looking from the back of our property up towards um, and so the area that's proposed to be enclosed is in the uh, our right hand corner of that with kind of the sloping um, sort of corrugated roofing on it there okay. Okay. that's pic picture two and then I provided for um, just some context a couple of additional pictures of the property so the uh, top right-hand corner there that has the door with the small porch, that is the um, area of the end of the property on the opposite side of the house. Uh, hold on. Uh, I'm seeing oh. pictures that I don't have in my picture. Yeah, I don't think we have oh, that sorry. picture. I may not have put that one in there. Apologies. <clears throat> and uh, it looks like the one that's up there now is, uh, that would be picture three. Okay. It's more to the left side of the of the of the property. Correct. We can't see the the proposed uh, addition uh, on that one. Correct. Yeah, I just wanted to provide more uh, view of what the shape of the property is there. And that's that the three, front porch. Picture three. That is a back porch. Or the back porch. Okay. Correct. Thanks. And the final picture we have is this one. Yes, that's, so that is, the, uh, that is the front of the house. I apologize, I did my best to reprint them. My uh, three-year-old yep, ruined yep. my packet this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I reprinted them all from my Google Drive uh, to the best of my ability, but I do apologize for the inconsistency on that. It was uh, wonderful timing. We do have subpoena power, I believe. Yes. <laughs> that would, that would be, that would be uh, yes. picture number four. Okay. Okay, I apologize for that. I can put it up here if, uh, if everyone would like to see that up. Presented as I well. don't think we have picture four in the pack. Sure. Yeah, and then that fourth picture that you mentioned is uh, basically from the street, looking at the whole property from the front. And where, where is the front door going? The front door is going to be going. Um, so if you have that um, 
fourth picture in front of you. I apologize. This one? No. Put it up here just so one. you guys can see it. So that one. where this middle window is, there's currently a powder room that goes left to right in the property. Yeah. And okay. we're going to turn the powder room to go north to south. And then where that window is, we'll be putting a front door there. Got it. Okay. Uh, you didn't provide any description of uh, the intended addition. Is it one story, two story? Sure, yeah, so the intent is a one story addition. Uh, our hope is to turn it into a playroom area for our children. But yeah, it would not be any taller or take away any additional space uh, relative to the setbacks. It would literally just be enclosing that area exactly as it is. Thank you. So it's, it's the same footprint? Exactly the same. And will there be additional structural work done to support the improvement, or is that not necessary? I mean, I'm, obviously, it will have to go through approvals, but just curious whether there's any additional structural work on that porch that needs to be done. The pad itself is already sufficient to support the project. Okay, any other questions? Uh, b b before we have a, a motion, I, I guess I'm a little curious about this, that you know, this is a, a continuation of an existing nonconformity. Um, the, the footprint is not changing based on the testimony. Um, so I, I imagine we need a, a variance from a, a variance from the code. Um, it, it's, but, but you know, I'm a little confused because I, I think by right that they can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kevin, what are your thoughts on why a That was what uh, Mr. Harvey and I had spent some time trying to figure out whether or not, you know, a lot of these things we don't have records of, do they predate zoning? Um, you know, being out there, seeing it, trying to do some research, it looks like a permit should have been required at some point um, while this was built, uh, before this was built or for it being built. So, you know, from that standpoint, um, you know, it's uh, an illegal nonconformity. They wish to keep it, so a variance from the side yard setback would be required. If this board finds that it is permitted as a matter of right and it is a legal nonconformity, then that's at the discretion of this board. So, so in your opinion, the the deck or the I, I don't know the age of the property. We'll I'm sorry. The side porch. Yeah, this the side porch uh, was constructed after the enactment of the zoning code that would have required the variance, the variance was not obtained, consequently, to bring things back into some sort of legal equilibrium. Correct. Yeah, and, and I th we see these all the time where it starts with a patio, and the patio is fine because it's not a structure that meets right. setbacks, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, let's put up a roof, um, not thinking anything of it because it's just a shade structure, and then lo and behold, three, four property owners later, you know, they want to enclose that area because it looks like it's a, a you know a viable space to you know capitalize on. Um, they're not further encroaching; it's already there, so no harm, no foul. And that's uh, and I credit the, the Harveys for actually coming to us with these things because sometimes we get called out and they're under construction already. Because again, people think no harm, no foul; it's already there. Um, but you know, so we we struggled with it back and forth, and ultimately I came to the conclusion that it should have been built under a permit, um, which then would have required a variance. It had not been. Uh, which is why I sent them here. I, I don't like bringing people to this board, nothing against this board, but um, it is owners on our residents to do that. Um, sure. So, you know, I don't take these decisions lightly. Okay. I, then I, I would think that uh, in a motion should be um, raised regarding, and I'll let somebody else make the motion, uh, a variance from the existing uh, setback rules. I would make the motion that the requested variance be granted. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any board discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Uh, application approved. Five zero. Thank you very much. Good Thank you very much, project. everyone. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. You as well. Uh,